Welcome to the XP Group's discussion of SEMA paper P1. Today we're going to look at um, a few um, more models or, or, or techniques for uh, managing performance. Uh, we're going to start with back flush accounting. Uh, this is one, uh, it's a simplified uh, costing method which is employed by companies that operate uh, with low inventories and, and short operational cycles. In other words, they can produce things fast and get them out the door. Now, essentially what backflush accounting is, is achieving is producing and selling first and then uh, taking account of the cost after the fact based on what's left over. So uh, instead of tracking costs and imposing them on products as you move forward through the production process with a very elaborate system, it um, records the costs after when the goods are, are completed, all the costs are known. It deducts the inventory costs that are left over, materials that haven't been used and so on, and the other expenses which have been incurred are then what we say are back flushed through the system and um, attributed to the to the production which has taken place. The uh, just-in-time uh, method, uh, we want to emphasize that it's uh, oftentimes been described as um, one of keeping low inventories. It's not exclusively that. That's just one of the several benefits that arise from having a just-in-time uh, management model. When one receives um, materials at the time that one processes them, then one is basically um, saving money and able to uh, realize savings uh, across the whole working capital um, range, including not putting people to work unnecessarily on goods, uh, on producing goods until there is basically an order for those goods, until um, those goods can actually be um, delivered to market with uh, minimal loss of time. So we can think of the JIT, the just-in-time system, as essentially a pull system, in which case, it, in, in which the customer is pulling products um, out of the factory. Now, this approach, which does result in very lean manufacturing and uh, cutting out slack and, and, and excess uh, excesses both in, in costs and time consumed is quite consistent with the total quality management approach. Um, it can uh, set as its, uh, which in, it, in itself total quality management is aiming at zero defects in the processing of, of goods and uh, reducing or eliminating downtimes in, uh, in uh, the equipment. So lean production and uh, delegating greater uh, initiative to the, to the employees to be able to uh, make continuous improvements in the uh, manufacturing process, i.e. Um, empowering employees. These are all consistent with the uh, just-in-time uh, philosophy. So total quality management, we've already anticipated that as well. Um, its objective is focused on customer satisfaction and getting things right the first time because it is um, considered to be wasteful to produce a product that turns out to be defective and therefore has to be scrapped. Even if one catches the defective unit before it has gone out to the customer, so there's no loss of uh, face, let's say, or reputation towards the outside world, uh, internally one can see that the very fact of having produced that defective um, item consumed uh, costs of a direct and indirect nature. And even if the uh, direct costs of materials can be recycled and won back, one is still consuming um, energy, utilities, uh, labor, time on having produced that defective um, item. And this is why total quality management really wants to squeeze out uh, any kind of waste. Okay, the, uh, please take a note of the four categories here in terms of costs, prevention costs, appraisal costs, 
internal failure costs and external failure costs. So there's uh, four ways in which one can uh, divide up the world in terms of uh, calculating the costs of conformance and uh, the impact of non-performance. The first pair of costs can be seen as being essentially preventative costs, and the second group as being uh, corrective type of costs. Then we have uh, the notion of enterprise resource planning, which uh, has been made possible through the uh, computerization or automation of business uh, processes. And the key word here is that the uh, information systems in a company are integrated into one central database so that there is more effective um, processing uh, and synthesizing of information. The idea is it should be able to produce better quality information to management um, more quickly. That is one of the key benefits of an ERP system.